Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Path of Me. I'm your host, Wendy Hutchinson. My guest today is a beautiful man. He's a level four Marconics energy practitioner, Jose Valverde. Hi. Also a sommelier in New York City. So he's kind of got a foot in both worlds. I can't wait yeah. to deep dive. Welcome, Jose. Thank you. Th thank you for having me. This is super exciting. It's so great to have you here today. So you're originally from Costa Rica. I am, yes. What was it like growing up there? Were you in a spiritual family, a religious family? What was your background? Uh, it was pretty religious. Um, Costa Rica was very Catholic at the time. And, mm -hmm. you know, my parents were too, not super religious, but at the age of like 15, I think, I started attending uh, an evangelical church because of my thirst to find something that resonated with me. And with me, slowly, every member of my family came to, to that sort of like church and it became super religious. Um, and so, yeah, it turned into, into a very like, sort of like, my parents were not very strict, but there were a lot of unspoken rules about what you could do and could not do and how you can be. So it became a little more difficult. Was it difficult to navigate your, um, you know, you have a partner. So was that difficult for you to live authentically and be who you needed to be and marry it somehow with this uh, yes. um, doctrine and, and the, the social pressure? Yeah. And family. How, how was that for you to navigate? Well, interest, interestingly, for me personally, I never had an issue um, with being gay at all. Uh -huh. So I very early understood that this was a Who path or a way for me to have a better understanding of life or to see it from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. So the ones that had a lot of issues were my, especially my mother or my father, you know, my siblings a little bit, but slowly they they are you know feeling better about it even though they don't say it much things got a little rocky when I announced that I was getting married and my mother said she didn't believe in that and and could you know and couldn't accept it that's but, so weird when you find your life partner and then you want everyone to celebrate you and love you and, and be happy so that must have been difficult emotionally to it was pretty tough at, at the time. Um, for some reason, I, I've never dwell on those kind of situations. I mean, it, I, I went through it, it was hard, came yes. out on the other side, my mother, you know, I go to Costa Rica with Dan and they're very nice to him. And, yeah. beautiful. you know, and they talk to each other on text. Um, so <laughs> it, I, I know it's, it, it's nice. So. Beautiful. I have always felt like if you, some, some things, yes, of course, but if you make it a problem, it'll it be a problem, problem forever. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. So it's all I never, never treated it as a problem. I treat it as my life and they know I'm very independent and have always done what I feel is better for me. So I gave yeah. them no, cho no choice. <laughs> right. You are. Yeah. I love that you're so authentically you. That's the beautiful thing about you. Yeah, yeah. I, you have to be. When you're gay, you can't, I mean, you either hide behind a mask for, mm -hmm. for years and suffer, or you have to be yourself. And by being yourself, you understand compassion and kindness because you have to receive that from people who might not like you. But also gay. you have to be, it teaches you to love and embrace yourself exactly yes right so the Definitely. sooner you acknowledge that and can own who you are completely I know. the easier for, your path is going to be right yes for me i realize early that we come to this lifetime with different you know ways of being and of living and this was just a learning vehicle being gay teaches you so much so much about yourself so much about others yes. it's not it's not about a negative thing it's just about a different car in which you are in this yes. lifetime that it's a little more colorful 
and but it gives you a, just a different perspective and a, and and a really cool one you had the self-awareness pretty early yes i mean i think i always knew i was different um ever since i remember i knew i was gay as as the concept the construct that has been placed in society when i was maybe like 13. so and not because of anything i just you know That's knew that you are. Yeah, yeah exactly That's the essence of you and i love that you were able to you followed a a, a boyfriend and it brought you to the united yeah. states so i know it was perfect it led you exactly where you needed to be and you ended up in connecticut at first you said yes Correct? it was it was great because i never i had family living in the united states and i thought i'll never do that it is too difficult it's too you know people don't have paper you know papers to work and all that i don't want to do that so when i met this guy and i was 22 years old and he said you want to come and live with me i was like nope no 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 <laughs> like, you, you must be crazy I was like, because you know and so he asked me and asked me and asked me until like a week later i was like okay i'll go for six months and see how it is and so and, and i did it and it was it was tough in the beginning but mm -hmm. but because the even though we grow up in latin america with so much influence from american culture once you are out of your culture and into a new one it's different it's, yeah it's tough so but it was you know like anything you have to go through it come out on the other side and 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 then it was the best decision i had ever made look at because, you now yeah you're exactly, exactly where you're meant to be right you're new york city <laughs> i know you and know, I, I always think who, who, yeah who would i be if i stayed in costa rica i would be a very different Absolutely. person because Absolutely. every country has a mentality and you grow within that mentality as much as you can and the mentality in costa rica at the time when i was growing up was very small so i'm happy that i came here and was able to experience so much and be able to like come out of my box and 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 just experience much more to life it's so interesting because we have all of these potential timelines yes and we get to these nexus points and you don't realize it at the time, but making that decision changes the entire trajectory of your life. Yes. You don't necessarily have a conscious awareness at that moment. You're doing what you feel is the right thing. But when you look back, you're like, wow, if I hadn't have done X, Y, or Z, I wouldn't be here. Yes, of course. Right? When, you, when you do the life review back. But yeah. you lost somebody very close to you in your life. Um, it was a good friend. Uh, his name was Harry. Yeah. Marin? Was it yeah. Marin? Yeah, Marin. Tell me about that and, and the impact it had on you. It sounded like it was a very profound impact. Yes. Um, so him and I were good friends in Costa Rica. Um, when I went back to Costa Rica after being here, we always saw each other, considered each other brothers. And, and at some point after I had been here maybe for, for like eight years, um my mother calls me one day and i would always call her because it was cheaper to call from here and she's calling me and i was like this is strange and she says your friend harry had a car accident and he died and you know i was i was here i i could have gone to costa rica but my my worry wasn't bad so and, and that turned my world upside down in this not physically or, or in the daily you know life but more in the spiritual side because i was like where is he where did he go what's going on um i want to know what's beyond it opened a lot of questions yeah, for you right definitely yes what, what year was that when was that, that was i want to say two, 2003 2004 it, it must have been 2003 because I was still working for a certain company. So, um, and it was around summertime here. So, I was I I grew up in in a household where um, anything that wasn't from the church 
was bad, you know, or was the devil. So I started to look into mediumship and psychics because I wanted to hear the stories of the people who passed away and were coming back to say hi to their families. Sure. And slowly, one thing took me to the other, and I started reading about spirituality and about about life, you know, and it really changed my perspective. It really is kind of the on ramp. Mediumship really is kind of the on ramp. Yes. To to bring us here where we are now, because that is the that is the awakening to the concept that there is something more. Yes, Life is exactly. not over when you physically transition. There's a whole, there's a whole other realm, a whole uh, soul evolution yeah. that takes place. And this was one aspect of that journey, this human life. Yes, so I feel right. like mediumship and the introduction of that is the on-ramp for so many people to just crack you open a little bit and then you start really seeking. Yes, exactly. And I started reading and reading and reading books and books and books about anything that I was drawn to um, that was spiritual in nature and sort of like had some sort of spiritual Message. world. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So I was, I always knew since I was a kid and I was always very afraid of the dark and of going to sleep by myself because I knew there was a spirit world okay, and yeah. I, and I was afraid that something was going to show up in my bedroom. So then no one ever said anything to me, but I knew it. So all this, I knew that there was a spirit world and I wanted to know more about it. And I, I, I was just searching and searching. And one thing took me to the other, to the other through the years. It's been, I don't know, he died when I was 30 and I'm 46. So it's been 16 years of searching and searching and and i found a lot of great things but nothing really stick for me it sounds like, like eckhart tolle's book the new a new earth was a real yes. pivotal moment for you and what was it about that what was it about that time and that message that resonated and yes cracked you open i was very depressed and not knowing that I was depressed. Mm -hmm. um, the life, the gay lifestyle in New York City is going out to the clubs, mm -hmm. doing drugs, mm -hmm. drinking a lot. Mm -hmm. And so even though that was exciting, at the same time, I was so depressed because I couldn't get to where I wanted to be. And, and I started reading that book after reading many other books and I always thought when I die, I will reconnect with myself. And I started to think about it is better if I die because, you know, this is just too painful to continue like this. Yeah. Yes. Sure. And reading his book, I don't remember what the book, I don't even remember what the book is about. But I remember that in the middle of the book, something that he wrote clicked for me and I started crying. I was by myself in the house where I lived and I started crying and I started rocking myself back and forth and just repeating, I thought I had to die. I thought I had to die. I thought I had to die because I reconnected and I was like, this is what I would, you know, you I thought I had to. In. You yeah. plugged back into your, your higher self connection. Yes. Exactly. You had been disconnected so, through all of that partying and crazy lifestyle yeah. and you got reconnected, which is so amazing. And that was 10 or 11 years ago. And so I continued my search um, and, and it's led me to, to where I am today, which is to me the most beautiful scenario I could have never imagined. Yes, Mark Honnick, and not because it is Marconics. It's not because it's this specific modality that it's, you know, it's the consciousness of Marconics that has come back to be the vehicle that will help us achieve that ascension. And that energy and that, that love that exists within that consciousness, it's the closest that I'll ever be right now to who I really am, you know? 
So it's just, it's like being home. It's, I can't explain it. And it won't be the same for everyone. But for those that will click, uh, it, it's going to be amazing. It is amazing. I think the most beautiful thing about it for me has been the pure connection with my highest yeah. aspect of self yeah. and the journey through the higher selves. Because you don't start out connected to necessarily yeah, yeah. the highest aspect. It's, a, it's an evolutionary journey. So as you expand consciously, as our energy frequency rises, then we get introduced to the next level. The exactly, next and the next level. level. Yeah. It's literally the ascension process, right? But it's the ascension process within ourselves. And that's what I love, is that it's us connecting to us. Yeah. Not exactly. external to us, it's, it's within us. And so I wanted to find out what it was like for you to experience that in such a visceral and powerful way. Just, yes, you know, definitely. obviously got plugged back in when you read that book. Yes. And continued your journey. Maybe you can speak to that and, and share with me how it felt to definitely. I evolution. Interestingly, uh, after connecting, I needed to change. I didn't need to change. I needed to shed so many aspects of my life that were going to be a challenge for me to ascend. And it took me many, many years to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Thankfully, when I met Dan, my husband, um, he brought a completely different energy to my life in a sort of like a structure and, and, and an unconditional love that really helped me be able to look at myself and be myself and, and shy away from a lot of things that I was doing that what a were not. I know, yeah. yeah his, it's been, it's been so great. So the last five years, I really worked on myself on changing a lot of things and being better, but just because I wanted to be a better person. Mm -hmm. I always ha had that. And, and so it was a great opportunity to do that. So throughout all these years, it was like sort of like cleaning house, you know, keeping this, getting rid of this, um, making this shine better. Um, it was, it was a pretty, you know, like long and slow process because that's how I had it in me. You know, I had, it had to take a certain amount of time. And even though I was, had opened up to so many concepts and so many things, I think when I got to Marconics, most of the concepts that are presented through Marconics, um, I had read about them. I knew about them. I, so by the time I got here, it was just like, the coming together of many things, plus the energy of Marconics, which is very special in itself. So yeah, it took me a while and it, it, and it was a lot of work. Um, and then things started to accelerate and accelerate. And I kept, I kept seeing whether it was like a channel, channeler or a medium or, and they all, like three or four of them said the same thing. Um, at the same time. And they said that my life was going to change, was on the verge of changing, and that I was going to live expansively. And at the time when I heard it the that. first time, That's so I know. That's yes. so when I heard it the first time, I thought, oh my God, I'm gonna make money and I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, and I'm gonna be rich. And so, <laughs> I know. So like every, you know, we all think that having money will make everything better, but it really doesn't. <laughs> so slowly I heard it again and then again and then again. And then I was like, I could feel it too, that I was at the door the shifting, of something. The shifting, like you were right there. You're just about to walk through the door. Ex yes. Ex and I kept getting this feeling like rushes of joy. And I was like, wow, whatever this is, is going to be coming. amazing. Yeah, it's, it's coming. coming for you. <laughs> and I kept reading and reading books about this and about that. And a friend of mine from Connecticut that her and her husband moved to Costa Rica two or three years ago. Um, and I hadn't spoken to them in a, in a while. She texted my husband and said, tell Jose to read the Marconics books. 
And I was like, the what? And, she, and Dan was like, that's all she said. And so I looked it up on Amazon, saw the books. I was like, okay, you know, I love reading. So I was like, two more books that I can read. Um, mm -hmm. And if she says it's fine, it's great. And I thought, I'm reading this book. I'm going to wait till I'm done with the book. And then I'll start reading this. Um, went to work, had a break opened my phone and looked at the Marconix book just, just to see what it's about. And I couldn't stop reading and reading and reading. And then I went back to work and I just wanted to get out of work so I could come home and read and read and read more. <laughs> and I read the two, the, the first two books in maybe like a week and a half or a little less um, just because I was desperate. And I, Two days before I heard about Marconix, I couldn't, I started to have it really, uh, to have really bad insomnia. And uh, so I couldn't read, I couldn't sleep. So I was reading till two, three in the morning um, about Marconix and getting so excited. And I was like, I think this is what I've been searching for. But I wasn't completely sure, but maybe like, I don't know, maybe like a week and a half into it, I was like, yes, this is it. I um, contacted someone in my area for a recalibration and I had the recalibration two weeks after starting reading the book. Wow. I know. Wow. So that was the I was, you jumped in. Yes, I was like, <laughs> I want this, whatever it is I wanted and I want to experience it. And I had the recalibration and it was very calm, very, you know, like I could feel the energy in my body, but it wasn't fireworks. And I thought, well, you know, I, whatever. And I started, <laughs> yeah. And then I started on a roller coaster that was. That ha yeah, that there was a delayed response at the yes. actual session. Because once it starts running, well, that's a 30 day period before you yes. actually set at your vibrational place. So yeah. that's kind of just lights the ignition. Then, exactly. Yeah. And start to go through the journey of all the shedding and it could be very, uh, it can be quite a ride. Yes, exactly. And not, not knowing, cause you have the idea that when you're going to start ascending is going to be unicorn unicorns and you know and rainbows and you're gonna be like oh in heaven yeah, and, <laughs> and there's so much that you need to like work to get it. rid of yeah exactly mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. through so it's it's now when i when all of a sudden i get like that specific headache that i know is marconics instead of that i get excited i'm like oh yes energy <laughs> coming so <laughs> Instead of being like, oh, headache, I'm like, I'm excited. Or if I'm dizzy, I'm like, yes. <laughs> right. Something's happening. Something's happening. I know. Yeah, so. One of the most powerful things I feel yes. about this energy is the alignment. It, it, it creates it creates an opportunity for you to very consciously align with yourself. Exactly. And through that alignment, there's an incredible amount of shedding of density. Incredible amounts, like huge volumes and weight. Yes. Um, what I found for myself going through it was it became, even though it was a process and it took time mm -hmm. the more I could face myself the more I could go in and connect and align the easier it became yes exactly in the beginning it was it's difficult yes you look at your stuff it's difficult to go into the darkest crevices inside mm. of you and go oh I don't really want to own that, but I have to own that. I don't want to go through that, yeah. I don't want to feel that. I don't want to see that. But, you know, I know that I have to yeah. go forward. And then so I, I hear you. It's, it's not a walk in the park. You have to have courage. I, like I know. And, and after <laughs> the recalibration, I 
like a month later, I went to an expo and my teacher, Robin, was there. So, and they, they were doing like a 20 minute session, uh, no touch session. And I was like, of course, you know, I got to do it. So I did it. And that like set me off into stratosphere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, ex I, I'm by nature very calm and sort of like easygoing and I'm not like angry oh, or sure. yeah exactly and I started feeling so angry to the point that I was I remember going to work one day and I thinking that I wanted to like push people on the street like <laughs> physically I was so angry I wanted to fight everybody and oh my I gosh thought, I know oh my and, gosh. <laughs> and I thought what is going what is on this? this is this is not me and it lasted like eight or nine days Oh my gosh, uh, yeah. that's a long time. Your poor, your poor husband. <laughs> I know, he, he knew, <laughs> yeah, no, he knew, and I wasn't fighting with him so much, but I wanted to fight everyone else. And then mm -hmm. what brought it to an end was I had a, an argument with my boss at work and about something stupid, of course, and because I was so angry. And then I, I realized that I had almost crossed the line and that this was going to have repercussions. So I came home and I'm, the other thing is that I'm not a, I, I cry with like sentimental things. Sure. You know, if, if I see a dog that, you know, right. in need, I'll cry, but right. I, otherwise I much less because of anger. Um, but I was so emotional, devastated that I, I came home and I cried. And so I had to apologize to my boss and, and that, and I talked to my higher self and I said, you gotta stop this. This is gonna Too be much. a problem, yeah. And yeah. so it, it changed and it morphed into the headache, the being dizzy all the time. But being dizzy is my new normal. I'm always dizzy. Um, not mm -hmm. so much after the intensive, um, but then I decided to sign up for level one. So they started to bring me up to speed so I could take level one. And that was interesting, um, but it, w it was manageable. After level one was like, once I said, yes, I am <laughs> going to do I'm this. They're like, all right. Yeah. They were like, okay, we got to put Turn him it up. The Turn yeah. up the energy and so, for him. <laughs> <laughs> so I took level one and I was desperate to go to the intensive, but I didn't have the money. And one way or another, I ended up being able to take on a loan to pay my credit cards and to go to the intensive. And I wasn't gonna do it because I was afraid I was going to be denied. And then, you know, the repercussions on, on your credit. And one day it was like, someone was pushing me, look into it, do it do it and I was like oh my god okay and I got my phone and I called the company talked to them and they seemed so honest and I was like still a little afraid and I pressed the button and then two days later I had all this money on my bank account and they didn't even ask me a question and so I paid for the intensive wow. paid, paid for my credit wow. cards yes and wow. and once I did that was like it was crazy from June, June and July, those two months, I was so dizzy and so like groggy and so lost that I was like, Hard to I, this, function, hard to yeah, function in life. Exactly. I think we should explain to people what that is. It's, it's yes. when, when you make a commitment to become a practitioner of Mark Von, you're your frequency is being adjusted and modulated. Yes. Frequency modulation that's happening leading up to your courses because yeah. you're, you have to be at a certain frequency to anchor in and draw down. That frequency is so powerful. It's a full spectrum, multidimensional energy. It's so powerful. And you individually, your energetic field has to be able to hold that and it has physical consequences, you know, like 
not in a, it's not, I don't know. I, I, I see it as, as something that just happens, you know, it's not something that you cannot live with, with. It's something that, you know, you get the headache here and there you go, you're dizzy, but you're able to, to function. I mean, I was always fine, but inside I thought this is so interesting because the energy has ramped up so much. Every time I said yes to a commitment, yes, it was like, they were like, okay, let's pump up the volume because he needs keep to- Keep turning the dial, turning yeah. the dial a little bit higher. He, 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 need, he, need, if he wants to take this on, he needs to come up. And, mm -hmm. and it was the most amazing and intensive, but like, I don't know, journey that I've had so far. So I wouldn't change nothing for, you know, for anything because I would it's, say that our consciousness expands about a hundred fold going through I this know. process. Going yes. through being a practitioner, your consciousness expands, your frequency expands, your alignment with not just a higher self, but your entire higher self lineage. Yes. Occurs. And it's inter it's yeah, everything expands and it's it's such a it's such a great thing for me going through the ascension symptoms. It's a blessing because I about the awareness. Yes, I because I know like, what's on the other side. Yes, I think some people go through it and they don't have the awareness, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, I need to go to a doctor. I've got these migraines. I've got ringing in my ears. I have incredible fatigue and." A lot of it. These are ascension symptoms. They're physically yes. manifesting, but you're not ill. Yes, definitely. Your frequency and, is rising. Right? And people, you know, go through different things with the energy. Um, for me, it was that way, and was many other like subtle ways that I could see the energy working in me. But I was so excited because I was going to the intensive, and I in the very beginning, like the first or second week of reading about Marconics before my recalibration, I saw a video of, I think it was Allison talking about uh, a class in an intensive and explaining how, you know, the energy would be strong. And, and I had this intense joy. And I was like, I felt like I was going to explode. And I was like, I have to be there. I have to go there. This is the most magical thing. I've always been looking for magic. I knew there was some sort of like magic. Then things were going to be sort of like amazing. And I hadn't found it. And when I saw that video, I was like, it was like every cell in my body was like screaming. Yes, we found yeah. it. I'd like you to share. You said that. But before we started recording, something happened when, when you were in there and you yes. could see if you could share that story. It was so interesting to me. Probably. So I had taken level one in New York and I went to Vermont to take levels two, three and four. So the first day of level two, we're all sitting down and then, you know, Allison and Lisa are there welcoming us and talking about Marconics and you know what's been happening lately the energy got so strong that I you know I was like I was there but I started to like Bye go up. somewhere else yeah in, in, somewhere in my mind and then all of a sudden boom I was it, it's also this energy is more of a feeling than for me than visual like visions so but I could sense and so, sort of see myself standing somewhere and knowing having the knowingness at that time that i had said yes to being part of marconics when i don't know in a previous you know existence and i when i said yes and i understood that that had happened i saw my life in like three streams behind me you know left right and center and even though I didn't turn around to see my life, I sensed all my life. And I had that moment in which I said, oh my God, the, it all made sense. 
everything, every joy and pain and happiness and sadness I went through was to bring me to this point. And I w was so excited. I'm, I'm still, I get a little emotional, but I was so mm -hmm. happy. And so it was, I couldn't believe that I was, I felt like I was able to find the needle in, in the hay, you know? Yeah. And I was like, I got it. I did it. I finally did it. And I felt so excited. And from that, that moment, you know, my perspective took a huge yes. turn. Yes. In a positive way. I'm the same. I'm going through the same things in my daily life, in my work. Mm -hmm. I'm this, the same person. But energetically, there's something new. There's a new tool, a new way that I can deal with life in a, in a better way, in a more self-aware, conscious. I can now see what's behind the situation when before I, I couldn't. I just do you have? It. Would you say your perspective around what's happening and presenting has changed? Would you say that? Completely. Yes, completely. What has been so powerful for you? That it's of course so powerful, but knowing and understanding how special this is and knowing that I'm finally on track. Um, I've always been on track, but there were so many lines that would take me to that moment. And I'm finally in that moment moving forward. Um, that changed for me everything. It changed. I don't feel like anything is out of control anymore. Like anything is mm -hmm. random anymore. I know that whatever happens is because it needs to come into my awareness and, and that I will be taken care of and that I will go where I need to go and that all the doors that need to be open will open and where I don't go is because I'm not supposed to be there. So I'm not, no longer worried, you know, about, where am I going to practice and who is going to come to the practice and what's going to happen? Yeah. Nothing. It's like you can release all your fears. Yes. Because you start to align so fully with your purpose. You, you're, you come physically in alignment with your soul, contracts and purpose. And the alignment is so pure. It's like this path in front of us is just lit up. Exactly. It's like you come in and this line just goes boom. And you're just... And, that is the acceleration I think we talk about. I think when we come aligned on a um, mind, body, and soul level with our higher selves, the yes. source, that accelerates your life path in a way that it's hard to describe, but all of a sudden, the right people show up, the right opportunity. Exactly. You're getting an email to collaborate. You're getting a phone call from someone random that you would never you're like how did you even find me yes <laughs> right uh yes. for for energy work or for opportunities or whatever it is it's almost like all of a sudden everything synchronizes and walks in it's kind exactly. of like you've been going through life and you have these gears and they were just a little bit off like they just didn't quite fit and then all of a sudden it just locks in Exactly. Great. And but, and like you said, the path mm -hmm. lit up but and it's lit up with joy because yes. it doesn't it's no longer such a task Purple. to go through life. It becomes more you know that there's surprises here and there happening, like you said, people contacting you or having conversations that you go like, Okay, this is this is great. This is how it should feel. And for me, this, this is such a personal uh, journey. Everyone will have their own journey and will find their own way. And not everyone will find the same energy. But for me, it's, it's like I, I feel home. I know that this is where I'm supposed to be. And I know that no matter what happens, I will always have my connection to my higher self. And that will not mislead me, will not take me down the wrong path. It will always be a positive, a great thing that no one can take away. Beautiful. That's yeah. so beautiful. And it gets stronger. It gets exactly. Stronger. 
you know, it no. keeps going. And I think one of the things that I really want to stress to people is you are always connected to your higher self. We you are just don't know. Because yeah. it's, it's us. It is us. The thing that confuses people is they think I'm not connected. It's, it's not that you're not connected. It's that you're out of alignment. Yes, exactly. Not that you, your yourself is always connected to you. Yeah. Like you can't disconnect, but you can lose your awareness and that connection and, and be out of alignment. And that's what you feel. That's exactly. when you feel there's no connection. That's when you feel this feeling because when you're off course. Right? Definitely. Right. And it's, yeah, it's just amazing to be able to have that connection. But people, yeah, have to understand because they tell you that you're broken, that you're this, that you're that. And none of that is true. We're, mm -hmm. No one's broken. No one, we're all still connected. You just don't remember. So mm -hmm. make an effort to find that relationship with your higher self. Mm -hmm. And to nurture it and and make it a daily thing. Do you meditate, Jose? What it, what is your spiritual practice? How do you connect? So, or mm -hmm. you know, what 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 tools do you use to foster? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I meditated for a while, and I did all this sort of different meditation types. Um, and when I came to Marconics, the meditation stops completely. Um, for me, so the way for me to connect, it's, it's sort of a meditation. You know, I close my eyes. I try to go to my, um, heart chakra and sort of like be there until it expands a little bit and try to connect to my higher self, um, in a way that it strengthens the connection energetically without, me being just with my eyes closed for 30 minutes trying to, I don't know, I never got anywhere. That's what happened to me with meditation. So I, I found that like, that it didn't work for me. It works great for so many people and it helps them have a better connection to their higher self. But I do it purposely. Like I sit down, I try to, to energetically enhance that connection and my meditation is I listen to music that I like when I'm by myself and I sing to the songs and that brings me into alignment, makes me so like joyful and happy. Um, it's, I don't know, spending time with the people I love and being present mm -hmm. that, I love bring, that. It brings so much in that, in those moments, I start to get so many things that I'm like, Oh, that's how it, it works. Oh, that's how it is. Oh, just having a conversation with my husband, he's of course going, you know, being entrained and going through his own things and working also on a um, photography um, exhibition that he's doing like a, a awesome. show. So talking to him, trying to give him some guidance about how to take on the, the challenges that he's going through brings so much information to me on how things work and how what we should do and what we shouldn't do so yeah i don't i don't meditate but i try to to take some time to i'm always talking to my higher self whether it's positive or or you know like sometimes <laughs> for whatever reason i'm like you're gonna take it you i know you take care of me i know you keep me protected um i trust you don't you know i know you're not gonna let me down or i sit down and say like wow thank you for this opportunity thank you for you know, it's become slowly and surely I have come back inwards, you know, from all the looking for Eternal. answers outside. Eternal. Yeah. Yeah, you I turn them that, within. I definitely found that uh, that was one thing that I really gained from this uh, training and doing this work is that I realized there's no answers outside of myself. That was huge. I can remember a couple of years ago, I was going through something really difficult. And in the past, it would be like, who can I call on? Who can I call on for help? Who can I? I'm sitting there in my, in my meditation. I'm like, 
oh, it's me. I have to call on myself. Yes. Not me. I know. And and nobody that, else. I call on myself. I call on my higher self. I call my higher yes. self. Down. I connect. And that's where my answers come to source. I call and connect to source. That's where my answers come from. I don't need to pick up the phone. I need, don't need to call in some sort of angelic being. No, I don't need to exactly. do it. I'm calling myself. And that answer yeah. will come. And they do. Yeah. And that connection, that realization of that, that connection, it has turned my life around to the right perspective. Um, you know, I never, I don't know, like I said, I talk to channelers and mediums and stuff like that throughout the time, looking for answers, looking for answers. I'm so desperately, and I even had like um, card decks on my phone that I would like, Mm -hmm. look for answers it none of that really worked for me much and it, it was never that clear but that minute the moment when i realized that all the answers are within and as cliche as that sounds it is when i was in the intensive one day um we were allison was talking and she took us through a, a really quick meditation and in the middle of the meditation she said ask a question and let it go as part of the meditation. So, and I said, cause I had just had the I am merch done mm -hmm. and I was like, who, who am I? I said to my higher self, you gotta tell me who I am. I, I need to know to have a better understanding. And I let it go. The meditation ended, everything was great. Um, she kept, Allison kept talking. And then all of a sudden she goes, cause people are asking how they claim their I am and I, I tell them, you claim your I am, by, sorry, your I am by saying, I am a sovereign being. And all the bells went on in my head. Boom, 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 boom. I was like, that's the, that's the answer to the question. And my higher self said, yes, that's the answer to the question. That's who you are. You're a sovereign being. You're working toward sovereignty as, as a being because no one will have power over you but yourself and you will make the decisions and you will you have all the answers and you have everything that you need to move ahead so it was like I was like that's it that's that's my answer and that's a that's, very powerful realization for most yes. people because a hundred percent of us have been taught to seek answers and guidance outside all of us have been taught yes Yes. through our culture, through our programming, through our friend circle, our family dynamics, our history, everything has taught us that we do not hold the answers, the authority is exactly. outside, and I'm here to tell you all that's not true. Yeah. We all hold the answers for ourselves. For ourselves, exactly. 100%. Yes. And that's huge. That's huge. That's I know. It's been... It's been a great surprise after the after another and it just makes me feel so so clear so crystal clear so crystal clear yes. exactly so crystal clear now i don't have all the questions sometimes before the, the question even becomes a question i receive an answer and mm -hmm. i'm like oh that's how that works or that's how you should approach that um so it's it's magical there's no Are you other... documenting your journey? Do you do you write things down? I write, I brought, I've been writing uh, I, on my phone. I have notes. So I write dreams and stuff, uh, you know, that I, because oh. it's sometimes it's so much so that much. You, you start thinking. You like, forget it. Did, yeah. What forget was the it, dream right? about? What, yeah. When did that happen? Yes. It's, it's really great. It's the most beautiful thing for me on, on my my Marconic's journey was falling in love with myself yes. completely and trusting myself and having the courage to claim my power. Trust in yourself is so important. Yes. Knowing that, yes. that you have the answers. It's, it's all been said in, in a certain way, but you have to really feel it. Yes. Um, and then when, when you do that, it, it becomes a reality for you. And it it's makes, uh, yes, it is very powerful. It is, it's, it's the time, 
to change, the time to ascend, it's here. And the opportunity has been given for us to, to really like take charge of our lives. So I'm really just super excited that I was able to, to find this, this energy for me, mm-hmm. bring it, anchor it down and possibly giving it to Fair. other people. People. If you're interested in working with Jose, he's in the New York yeah. area, but he's also, you know, also uh, distance sessions are available. So if you live yes. abroad or you uh, want to connect, um, distance no touch sessions are available. So I'm going to put Jose's contact information down below and you can reach out to him and book sessions with him, connect with him. And I don't know about you. I know your experience with Robin has been, she's become kind of a mentor to you and yes. someone you can turn to. I'm the same with my clients. If I do a recalibration on somebody and work with them, I'm available to help them navigate this because it's, it's a very unique experience. And, and it's, it's an, yeah, it's an ongoing path. It's not a, I delivered the energy and you're on your own. No, it's, you're going to go through your own journey. So as a practitioner, you know, I want to be there to be able to Quite hear that. the person out and to like mm-hmm. give them advice if that's what's needed or just listen. It's important. It's been yeah. so crucial for me to have someone when I don't understand something or I didn't understand something to be able to say, Hey, what's going on? Or hear me out. And then hear an, an answer that makes sense. And you're like, oh, Okay, good. I'm, I'm better now. It, it makes all the difference. You're gonna, you're gonna change so many lives, Jose. Just I will, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, just by being you and um, being this energy practitioner, and also, also with your partner, who's also a healer. So I think I know. you guys are like a dynamic duo. I think it's amazing that you come together at this yes. pivotal time in our earth system. It'll be great. I'm, I'm very excited. So, and I'm open to whatever my higher self has in store for me. It'll be really fun. It's pretty exciting. It's going to be yes. exciting to see where life takes you now that you have all this alignment and these tools and this energy yes. that you're carrying. And it's kind of a trifecta. I think it's all, all coalescing and creating some magic for you. Yes. That's yet to unfold. So much is yet to unfold so thank you so much for joining me today it's been such a pleasure that hour went so quick i know (laughs) thank you for i know thank you for having me this is so much fun it's Mm -hmm. just great to be able to tell a little bit of my story and put it out there and and people will resonate with the energy and Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. it'll be great what do you think the biggest shift has been for you? What, what has been the biggest impact over the last few months of this um, accelerated So, journey? like I said before, being, having the tools to go through my daily life, it's one of the, of the better things. But to me, the biggest thing is I lived in fear for so many years. I had fear about everything the fear heights and you think it's this or that but you know like meeting new people going to a new job whatever proving yourself um go taking a trip everything was like oh my god is this gonna happen it's not gonna happen you know all that kind of fear has it's slowly vanishing and now i feel more sure more confident of who i am and where i'm going and i don't have to rely on that fear to get me through through the day. Um, so fear, not having that fear is freedom. It's actual freedom and it's being replaced by joy. It's just I joy just, and happiness. I'm so excited for you. That's so fantastic. Congratulations yes. on, on shedding all that. You have to shed all that weight. Yes, exactly. <laughs> stuff, right? To get to that place where you're yes. in a vibration of joy and can actually hold a higher vibration of joy. So yes about it so i know well thank you so much jose it's been wonderful thank you. it's been beautiful having you on my show i i honor your journey process it's gonna be thank beautiful. you so, so much. much to my audience thank you so much for tuning in i hope you um 
got a couple nuggets of wisdom around the ascension process. Please subscribe, like, and share. Be kind to yes. yourself. Love yourselves. I love y'all. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.